Hi everyone, it's Nono here, and today we're going to see a demo of the result of the building a pix 2 pix drawing app series of tutorials. Nate Peters is going to present uh, the way that he's connected his master thesis, enabling alternative architectures that you can see in another video that I posted with his lecture, to the application that we built with Glitch and Runway running pix 2 pix in real time. This means being able to draw shapes, as you can see, uh, as you can see here, they draw uh, black shapes and then get them converted into floor plans. And you know, you can watch the video to learn more. And this is the result of what we did in, you know, in uh, video number one and, and video number two. The first video covers uh, how to build the basic drawing app. The second one, how to connect it to runway and predict. And then there is a missing part three that we might release that goes from the end of part two up to what Nate has built. Without further ado, I'll let Nate demo the application. So yeah, kind of picking up where we left off. Uh, so like Nono said, we decided to revisit all of this, you know, with the tools that we now have at our disposal, you know, 18 months, two years later, everything is much, much better. Um, the difficult, I think the primary difficult thing a couple of years ago was that there, you know, there were collaborative tools, but Runway ML was in very early days. Um, and it was mostly difficult to be able to set up a machine to run TensorFlow and then make something that other people could consume. You know, there's, it's, TensorFlow was very difficult to get like actually properly installed and to do anything, especially on uh, graphics cards. And so that was, you know, like days or I think I spent like a week getting it working for my thesis. Um, but now it's a very straightforward process. So just at a baseline level, um, that stuff is a lot better now. Um, so what we did is, my notes here. Um, and the other thing, yeah, then Colab also was a thing that existed, um, but now you can access GPU, you can access your Google Drive. Um, so when we train these models, I you know, took my prepared data set, put it on a folder in Google Drive, linked it to a Colab notebook and ran the cells and had a completely retrained model on new data um, in like a very surprisingly small amount of time. So what I'm going to show here is um, kind of the final product, and then we'll build back up to kind of show the behind the scenes things that are they're happening to make this work. So the first thing is the, this is the interactive app that we built in Glitch. So this is the, the actual interface. Um, and what's happening in the background is it's taking the, you know, the square on the left, it's generating uh, an image that is you know, in the same style as the, the training images of, from the, the data I showed earlier. And then it's creating new outputs kind of based on, on what you're, you're providing the model. What's dramatically better here is that the, the prediction time is like two tenths of a second. It's, it's almost real time. Um, you can run this remotely on the cloud. Uh, for demo purposes, I'm running it locally on, on my machine, but you, know, you don't actually have to have any of this installed um, in terms of the actual code compiling, you could just point it at a, at a container that's running on the cloud all through runway. Um, but the you know, the major ingredients here are glitch, runway, um, and then you know a code IDE if you if you want to run stuff locally. Yeah, and code IDE for those who you don't know what it is, it's just like a like code editor, right? Like a... right, yeah, just whatever whatever text editor you use to, to write and compile code. Sorry, I'm on the I'm on the online, but it's not generating predictions because there's no back end right now. Yeah, right. so so the that's application a, yeah, Nate, you can reply. Sorry. Oh no, yeah. So yeah, the the way it is right now is that we don't we haven't hosted the model. The model isn't running live at an endpoint for anyone to run predictions against. Uh, we'll get into that why later, mostly because it's you know, you can run up a pretty big credit card bill if you open these things up and, and they start to get hit with a lot of traffic. Um, so what we're going to show is essentially the process of how to run the model for yourself with the stuff that we published, um, which will then, you know, once you kind of create your own backend, then the app will yeah. work in the front end. So, so to kind of shorten or summarize that, the, if you go to the URL, can you go back to the other slide? Yeah, so in yes. case people want, actually want to try this. So we'll put, now that I think about it, we probably should put the, the explanations on how to use this because you can use this, you know, now or after the, the lectures. 
if you go to pix to pix as you can see on the url piece to pix dot glitch dot me you will get this app and you can use it you can draw you can do that but the application won't find runway because you don't have runway in your machine and it's not going to be running so for that second part uh we probably should have made a video i, I think on my video explain a bit of that but what you have to do is that you download runway you will have to be to download the pix2pix -pix model and get it running and just by having runway and pix2pix -pix running on your machine on the same machine you open this website you just put the right port there and it should be working but yeah yeah thanks no yeah that's that wasn't clear and so we'll actually yeah we'll go into the runway stuff first i'll show how glitch works and then we'll kind of build back up to getting the app running locally So just as kind of a general intro, so this is glitch.me. Uh, this was not something I had ever used before. Nono actually showed it to me when we decided to kind of pursue building a new interface. Um, it's super cool. It's really powerful. Um, essentially, it's, you know, if you've worked collaboratively with someone in Google Docs or Google Slides before, um, it's very reminiscent of that. You know, you could have multiple people in the same file at the same time. Everything kind of updates in real time. Uh, you know, it runs in a browser. Uh, and there are tons of documentation, you know, you can, any JavaScript library that you would like to learn, you know, I want to learn React, I want to learn D3, um, you know, they have kind of boilerplate templates that you can pick up and, and make a blank project and go from there. Um, so all of the, the interface we've, you know, it's just running from live from that glitch me project. Um, and we're using a, a library called paper.js. Um, it's sort of this might be a stretch. It's just sort of like Adobe Illustrator in a sense, but in, in a way that you can make vectors and sort of draw objects in a way that's reminiscent of, of you know, objects you would draw in a vector editing environment. Um, but it's also super straightforward. I, I wasn't aware of this until pretty recently, but it's, it's super nice to work with. So on the runway side, um, so I've just, you know, downloaded runway, installed it, and this is the kind of the default screen that pops up that you might have to click like browse models. Um, but this is the, you know, the model store where you can look for essentially projects that other people have, have published for, for public consumption. Um, so if you scroll down, you know, there's a huge list of kind of recent stuff. Our thing pops up because we put it up relatively recently. Um, but if you don't see it, you can also just search for it in the search bar. Just type in pics to pics. Um, Nono did run into a weird thing where it wasn't showing up unless you got a direct link to it. I don't know if it's still happening or not. Um, if you can't find it in the store, we'll, we'll post a link. We'll post a direct link on that. Uh, yeah, I'll put it on the chat right now. Okay, yeah. So if you want to check it out yeah, and you can't find it, um, he'll put a, a link there. Uh, but once you're there, it should take you straight to this page which is just the model overview. Uh, this is links to the code um, and kind of the general info for the model. Um, went way too fast here, sorry. Um, but the, you know, once you're here and you want to start to play with it, the, the only required step essentially is you go up here to add to workspace and then Runway has kind of different project zones. You pick a bucket to put your project into um, and I'll just drop it into my main, main workspace. And here, I'm essentially, I already had it in there, so I deleted the duplicate, but I'm essentially simulating, you know, someone who doesn't have this on their machine before, doesn't have the source code, they just want to run it from the hosted version. Um, the first time you probably have to download some of the assets, there might be a little bit of time to pull down the, the kind of bundled version of the model. But the way that Runway works in a general sense is that it's kind of, it has a, like a containerized version of the model that it will download in a big chunk. Um, and once it has that, you can run it kind of in isolation on either on your computer locally, or you can, using cloud credits, you can run it on their machines, um, which I'm going to show here. So I'm going to pick GPU. And um, this does cost credits. It's like five cents a minute, I think. Um, you know, so if you're just playing around by yourself, you could probably do that for quite a while. But if you want to host this for lots of people to use, that would turn into a big number very fast. So just be aware that there can be real money involved here. And so once I've downloaded the model and actually launched it, um, all I did was click file and then file. You can go to your, your 
fact finder or windows, whatever you're using, um, and then pick an image that's formatted to fit the model. So the, the only real requirement here is that it's 256 pixels square, uh, the same as all the training data. Um, and if your image meets that requirement, then it'll take that as an input and then pass it through the model and then return the output back to the screen here. Um, this has a, there's a bunch of other cool stuff kind of behind the scenes that I won't go into. You can, I think, input video, you can input like directories of stacks of images that are frames. Um, so if you want to make the kind of flashy neural network GIFs that you see on Twitter and Instagram, you, know, you can animate some shape and then pass the frames through, uh, through a model this way. And there's a few image editing tools here. Um, so you can rotate, mirror. Essentially, this is the, you know, so we're going to use these tools to actually drive the, the Glitch Me app. But there's also like, you know, a fully kind of hosted set of tools inside Runway. So it can, you can use it in isolation um, if you want to. And then the other set of tools here for models that are running remotely um, is all of these endpoints. Um, so a few people have been asking, you know, can I use Runway from you know tool A you know ABC whatever Grasshopper um, I, the way that Runway is kind of designed to operate in the simplest way is to just post you know make make REST requests make um, kind of traditional web based requests to an endpoint um, which you could do in code from you know Grasshopper Dynamo really any platform that can that can make a make a post request you can then interact with a hosted model. So the next thing I want to show is running this and then connecting to it in the Glitch app. So you'll notice here that in the, uh, so I have the right checkpoint selected, but then oops, here in the kind of routes info, there is a value here and it says it's kind of small, but you know, localhost 8001. So there's a, a default port that it's going to serve the model on. So once this thing says that it's up and running, um, it's going to tell you the route that you need to ask for information from. So it's gonna be the place that you send images and then it's gonna return data back from. And so once that's up and running, we can go back to the Glitch app and then I'm gonna add in the correct value there. And you'll see automatically it connects and then it's going to start serving predictions. And so it's kind of cool is that it's, it's actually, you know, it's going to use the GUI. It's going to run, it's, it's essentially going to treat it the same as if you'd opened up a file locally or if it had received a request. Um, and there's a new kind of magic tab that opens up here. Um, this, I think this only shows up if you've actually run something through the network to the model. Um, but this will essentially be kind of a new model space that'll, that'll preview the data that, uh, that it's processing. And so the next thing I'm going to do here is then uh, switch to a different model. Um, so when we built this in Runway, you know, we trained multiple different data sets on the same source code. Um, and Runway gives you tools to upload multiple kind of representations of the same model. So here I've switched to known as Daisy's model. And then I'll badly use my Mac trackpad to try to draw a flower. I wish I had an Apple pencil. Uh, but you can tell, you know, now it's not generating house plans. It's obviously running on, on a totally different uh, set of model weights. <laughs> it's hard to draw with the, with the mouse. It's, it's super hard. Yeah, that was like my third attempt and they're all terrible. <laughs> this is so cool. Yeah, though. so if you... Oh, go ahead. This is so cool though. Oh, yeah, this is... It was surprisingly, especially jumping back and forth between models, that was the thing that I was the most impressed by. Um, so we, yeah, we showed all the code that we used to train these different checkpoints. Um, but once you have your project connected to Runway, it's just a one-click thing to take, uh, you know, kind of the saved model weight representation and then, you know, tag it, label it. Um, I think I know we found Kyle Steinfeld, who was on earlier, had some uh, pix to pix experiments at Runway too, and he has like hundreds and hundreds of checkpoints that I think his, his students must have generated. But yeah, it's, it's really extensible, which is awesome. Can I highlight how 
it took you guys like four months, uh, full day, full time working on this to get your thesis working and getting this ready three years ago or four years ago. And now you just put it together like overnight in the weekends just for this workshop. The same thing. Yeah, it's hard to it's it's hard to like overestimate like how wild that is. I like to think a little bit it's because we might have probably have gotten better at coding, but also the tools have gotten dramatically better. I think that's that's probably the larger factor here. Yeah, yeah I, I think sometimes it's not straightforward to convert models to different formats and find how to how to get them running on the background and, and things like that. But you know, runway is trying to to abstract that and. I think also, yeah, the fact that we're getting better at coding probably, but I think it's a matter of uh, documentation as well. So uh, Google is doing a really good effort in porting all their models so they can run in those Colab notebooks. And that's just, you know, Colabs are um, like just like a website, you open the project and then you see all the code in, in a Jupyter notebook that is just a, a way to see Python code that can get executed in, in a text document. And, uh, you know, you can just do that um, a lot easier than before. Nate, are you yeah, going to oh, are you gonna continue? Are you going to continue? Do you still have more material? Or? Yeah, I have like two or three more. And then I was going to okay. switch to just kind okay. of playing with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, one last comment to that. So the, the way that Runway does it is that, you know, regardless of the complexity of the model, once it's wrapped into Runway, all the models are interfaced the same way. So you just have... A model running, you keep, you start it, you input something, and then you get an output. This at the end of the day is like a you know a parametric function, like a mode, uh, like a node in Grasshopper. You have just a set of inputs and then a set of outputs. So the you know the simplest way to get up and running. So if you want to have the the glitch app working live um, and you don't really want to mess with any code, um, you can essentially just do the two steps that I just showed, you know, get glitch up, get runway, download the model from the model store and just run it as is and, and pick one of the checkpoints. If you're interested in, you know, playing with these things and kind of learning what's happening behind the scenes, the, the second way would be to actually run it locally, which is, which is how I'll be showing it. Um, so you can pull the code for the actual uh, runway wrapper, which is what Nona was just describing. Um, so it's actually, it's a super tiny amount of code. Um, and essentially this is just taking a reference to one of those saved model weight files, and then it's telling Runway, you know, how to how to process data. So you know, it's going to take in uh, an image. It's going to you know map that to an array of pixels, do something through the model, and then send an image back to Runway. Um, one thing that I, I'm only showing this just because people might have to do this. Uh, I use Anaconda to kind of isolate. Python, because it's hard to have tons of Python on your machine. Um, I think Runway has to be 3.6, and I didn't have that. So I, I set up Anaconda just to kind of sandbox this stuff with all of its dependencies. Um, but it's just, I think, one or two lines of code. So you start up your Conda environment. Um, and the only command, once you're in, is just Python, and then the name of this script over here, which is runwaymodel.py, uh, which is the, the entry point into here. And once that kicks up, it'll say model initialized. And now it's able to actually take in and receive information from, from the Rama UI. And so once you're there, you can actually go back to runway. Um, and the difference of this step is instead of you know going to the model that's in the workspace that you downloaded. There is another little section here on the left that says development server. So you're going to pick dev server. Um, and this is kind of a, more like an open format, essentially. It's just designed to connect to a model that you started locally, like I just did. Um, and you can see there it says port 8000. Um, and that, you know, the port that it started on shows up in the command line when you, when you start it in terminal. Um, so it, I stuck to the default. Uh, it connects, you know, instantly as long as it finds it. And it's up and running again in the same way. So this is just the yeah, kind of the local, if you want to play around with the code and sort of change how the image processing works. Um, or if, for instance, you wanted to you know, take the image that comes out of the model, but then do some additional transformations to it, you know, change the colors, clean it up, rescale it, anything like that. You could sort of set that up as a middle step in the code before returning data back to the, back to the runway environment.
And okay, so this is the last video I have. Um, and kind of similar to, you know, when we were running it remotely in the cloud, you can also switch between models locally um, if you're running it on your machine. Um, we can make these files available. So if you if you train a TensorFlow model, it'll save out uh, kind of a, a batched file called an H5 file, .h5. Um, and that's the format that, that Runway wants to, to use for, for loading saved versions of a, of a model. So I, by default, had it set up to run one of the, the floor plan models. Uh, so what I did was I just changed that line of code to say, you know, when you're in dev, instead load up the Daisy's model, I'm going to kill the server and open it back up again just to refresh it. Um, and as soon as I connect to Runway in the background, uh, it'll be talking to the Daisy's model. So if you're, you know, trying to, if you're training on different data sets or you want to see, you know, kind of the differences between your models, um, you can just do that. You know, you know, one line of code inside of. Uh... So yeah, so there I actually picked a flower image after switching to the flower model, and it's working the, the way I expected. So these are just different ways to kind of test that things are, are working the way you expect before you uh, upload stuff for real. Okay, so I can pull up the app super quick. Is there anything else no, no, you want to add? Uh, I wanted to, are you, do you have to set something up? Can, do I have like 30 seconds? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so like really, really quickly point to this. So uh, if you, you know, if you Google, um, I believe I Google just pix to pix collab, and we're not going to go into any of this, but just pointers for whoever wants to take a deeper look at these things. So if you look at that pix to pix collab, you'll get to this, so this is, Collab. We haven't really talked about it that much. We just mentioned it. We haven't seen it. And, you know, this is a document that looks like a text document, but actually if you scroll down, it has Python code. And uh, once you try to um, run one of these cells, just clicking play here, you will actually get on the cloud, you'll get a machine that is allocated for you on the cloud. You can also set a GPU. And then this is all the code of pix to pix You know, it's a bit overwhelming even for me to look at all of this. But at the end of the at the end of the thing, you actually get um, uh, a model train, right? So for in-depth uh, things, just if you're looking at models, you hear names of models that are sort of famous, like StyleGAN, pix to pix or ResNet or other things. Just try to see if there is a call that built for it, because you can just run the whole thing on a web tab, and you're guaranteed that you don't need to set up Anaconda, you don't need to set third-party dependencies or anything like that. Just like uh, I think at the the top of that notebook, there's a link to that in GitHub, and it's in a directory alongside a bunch of other examples. So there's like a you know a generative set and a text based set. So I think they have all that stuff organized on their own Git repo. So you can kind of look around in there too. Okay, let me share. I think no, no, you can add that to your uh, link aggregator. I will. Yeah, I will right now. Awesome. Okay, so back to the glitch app, kind of where we started. This is not connected, so nothing's happening yet. So all I have to do is, where am I? You know, and, and as you can see here, uh, I just edited the the, pix, the glitch app. Uh, I just added those instructions that we were missing. Many of you were asking. Uh -huh. Yep. In the uh, background. So it, it's collaborative, and you can see the edits live. So it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's it's really 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 nice to work with. Okay. So this is just the exact same set of you know things that I did in the the video. But I'm just doing it here to avoid starting up the whole. VS Code app because my computer is very overloaded. But you can see that it's loaded and it's serving on the default port 8000. So now if I pull up Runway, I'm back in my dev server mode. I'm going to hit connect. Well, and one thing, so just one note here is that if you, nice, so, so just one really quick note you don't really need to do the thing with the terminal for everyone else, right? That ideally, you will just download the model in runway yeah. and just click run, right? I'll, I'll yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm just avoiding the, it's a little bit, I noticed this morning that when you're running Zoom and you're running the model remotely, it's a little bit slow. Um, 
So this is just for speed. But yeah, essentially, if you wanted to do this um, without dealing with any code at all, yeah, like I said before, you can just run remotely. Um, it does go to sleep relatively quickly. Like if you let it sit for a while, it'll it'll self disconnect to prevent it from eating a bunch of credits. So if it seems like it's not working and you're doing the the run remotely stuff, it's probably just because it it put itself to sleep. Uh, but here, this is kind of nice because it won't uh, it won't go to sleep in the background. Yeah, this is essentially it. So the yeah, I, compared to the the version of this we had two years ago, I like playing with this dramatically more, and mostly because it's it's essentially real time now. There was a lot of latency before in TensorFlow one, but ten, TensorFlow's gotten faster, and Runway makes it really really quick. Um, just as a pointer to people uh, who don't uh, want to use the terminal, right? So ideally, you just get to this screen once you install Pix to Pix. You see my screen or not? Yes. Yeah. So you see Pix, you see Runway? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So the, the thing is that once you have everything set up, you see that this is blue. So the DCS model has been downloaded. The model is downloaded. So I can say local CPU run locally. I'm not going to do this because of what Nate said. So if I start this, my do we have, yeah, maybe I'll just try it. If it goes slow, it's fine. So I just clicked on run, right? So I just clicked on run there and, and that's starting. And on the, on the pix to pix app, just by making sure as Nate did to put the same port, uh, where we see the network. So you see the, the port here is 8,000. It's really small, but it says 8,000. So I just run uh, port 8000 and hopefully if I do that this might take a while so let's see so right now the the thing is not open uh, I can draw either yeah so okay so that now that's working and you know the input is go. getting here but uh, the model is still starting so we'll just see you know just to see the only thing you have to do is run the model and come to this website click here so if you have don't have the model click here to open the model once you run it and download everything, this should work and we'll see it working. So, okay. So this is, you know, don't want to spend more time on this. I think you get the overall idea. So how many time in QA do we have? 15 minutes or? Do we or have, um, do we have resources, Nono and Nate, that we can point people out to as in like, this is a video of like, how do you actually set this whole thing up? Uh, with on a tutorial, like simple, so that people can watch offline and try to get running on their machines. Um, so just how to set up Runway, you mean? How to set up Runway and how to connect it to the pix to pix glitch model. I, in one of the videos I posted on the chat, I talk about how to, so I show how I plug this up on the early stages to the pix to pix model. So it's actually there, so there's a video. Uh, it's not fully there as a compressed thing, but one of the two videos, the second video I sent part two has that. So you can, you can go check that out and it's on the link list. If you enjoyed this video, I'd like to invite you to take a look at my learning playlist that you can find under my YouTube channel. This is a playlist uh, that I call design automation and machine intelligence for artists and designers, where you can find other videos that have to do with machine learning, automation, and design. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.